Hi, I'm Luann Worley with Rock and Book Reviews, and I'm here today with Cameron Wright. Uh, Cameron, I was reading in your bio, and before we get into our author questions, I was just curious. What do you do in assisting your wife designing McCall patterns? Yeah, so we, um, she actually doesn't still design, but she, we, we did in the past. Uh, she was the, for 15 years, she was the exclusive bridal designer for the McCall Pattern Company. So that was a pretty fun gig. We would go to New York a couple of times a year and present new patterns. And uh, in fact, we were calculating one day uh, kind of how many brides had worn dresses that, that she would have designed the pattern for. And it was over a million brides, just bragging on my wife there. So that was an industry that the sewing industry, right, has been kind of on a downward trend. So a few years ago, she jumped out of that and she is a a decorative artist and she paints uh, in buildings uh, really all over the world. As far as what I did, you know, I, I <laughs> the business side of, of things. She was kind of the creative person and I kind of handled the business side when we were doing work for McCall's. So what did that involve on your end? Um, well, uh, you know, the, the keeping the books and, and tracking sales and, and everything that kind of goes goes along with running a business grow yeah. business as well and I, I tell people you know it's bridal as in weddings not horses but um <laughs> yeah we had a, a couple of retail stores and and so again there I would would kind of handle the business side of running those stores it was oh, interesting through those, through those stores that we were able to make the canal McCall's connection in the first place and kind of where that I've started. never talked or met with anybody who's been associated with anything like this with uh, making patterns so <laughs> it's <Yeah>. interesting <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, one other quick question. Are you related to Julie Wright? Uh, not that I know of. No, not that I know <laughs> Some of your previous books have won several, several awards. Which one was the most memorable? Um, probably the, the, uh, the Rent Collector one, uh, I say one, it was nominated for the Dublin Literary Award. And that's probably the most, pre uh, most prestigious award. It, it, you know, it's a... a books from all over the world are nominated and just to be among the the, the books that were off, uh, nominated that year was an honor uh, you know it was I'm talking like authors like Barbara Kingsolver and they just you know top New York Times best-selling authors to have my book included was just really humbling and, and I was uh, really grateful for that. That is fantastic. Um, I I haven't read any of your books yet, and I'm anxious to because <laughs> apparently you've got quite a few awards, so it's, and they I'm do looking vary, forward to it. They do vary a little bit in genre. So The Rent Collector is probably the most uh, well-known. Um, it and The Orphan Keeper are very similar in, in sort of genre and style. Um, the uh, Letters for Emily, my first book from a gazillion years ago, and Other Side of the Bridge kind of tend to be a little bit more commercial fiction. And then the Christmas book is really just kind of a tongue-in-cheek, you know, humorous tale that, uh, that I wrote. And so again, some people will read the, the Christmas book and say, well, that wasn't like Letters, you know, or it wasn't like The Rent Collector. Yeah, it wasn't really ever intended to be. <laughs> <laughs> collector. So, the rent so collector, you just like to write a, a variety of genre, right? That's right, yeah. The Rent Collector and The Orphan Keeper are really kind of more serious, more, I don't know if literary is the right word, but, uh, you know, more serious works. And uh, in an interview with Writer's Bone, you stated while penning your first book, quote, I learned it was an agonizing, insufferable, forlorn occupation and yet equally magical. I couldn't get enough, unquote. Please explain that statement. Yeah, so um, I can probably best explain that by, I was actually just, re I received a question a few days ago from a student uh, who, and I, clearly they were probably reading one of my books in school, but he asked two questions. He said, um, what, what's your favorite thing about being a writer and what do you dislike most? And my answer to him was, um, I said, you know, the thing I like most about being a writer is when you spend kind of all day crafting, you know, this vision that you have and putting this paragraph or page or whatever it is you're working on together. And, and at the end of the day, it just comes together and it, it, it fits like you expected and how you want it and the words flow. And it's just kind of this beautiful piece of writing. I mean, that's the best thing about being a, an author. And what's the worst thing? Well, 
kind of the same thing, starting and, and working all day on that paragraph or that page, or that scene. And then by the end of the day, you realize nothing has worked, nothing is flowing. You're going to have to throw it all away and, and start fresh the next day. And that's a very frustrating uh, you know, situation. And so it, it depends on the day, right? Some days are great and they work well. Other days they don't. And uh, But it, it's when the, the days work well, it's magical. When they don't, it's frustrating. And uh, But it's all the same process. You know? It reminds me of genealogy. My husband wonders why I do all that research and still never come up with anything. But when you come up with that one name, <laughs> right. that one date. <laughs> sentence makes the day worth worth it you know exactly. absolutely i can understand that okay uh you have seven books right i do yeah you feel your novel in times of rain and war is your most ambitious tell us what a little bit about the book and why you feel it's the most ambitious yeah so um i i uh, when i realized i i was going to write a world war ii story i mean that's exciting because you know it's a, a great genre to write in and i think a lot of authors kind of gravitate toward that era, that, era, that uh, time in history, because it is really amazing. But I completely underestimated the effort that that would take. I thought, you know, it might take a two or three months of, of research. Well, from the time the story was introduced to me to, to you know, when it actually came out, it was three years. And, and so I would sit down and, and think, okay, I'm ready to write. And I would start to write and realize, yeah, no, I, I didn't have a grasp yet of of the things that I needed to understand. And so it would be more research and more study. And, and then I'd try again and I'd, well, I'm still not ready. And, and that went on for a long time before I really felt like I, I could sit down and write a story in that era. It, when you're writing World War II, you can't just make stuff up. I mean, it has to be accurate. Uh, not only, you know, the technical aspects of, of the war and of, of the, the military side, but, but really the sense of what the people were feeling, what were they going through, what was the mood like. And, you know, the book set in World War II, London, during the Blitz. And so it's a spe specific time in history that I'm trying to, to set this story in. And it just needed to be right. And, uh, and it just took a lot longer than I expected it would to do the research. What inspired the story? Um, I, I was at a book event for the Orphan Keeper, and I met a woman there whose name is uh, Rachel Bowers. And Rachel, uh, she served in Iraq, and she uh, not only served in Iraq, she, was, she would ride in the front of their nighttime convoy and watch for roadside bombs. When she came home, it was with a Purple Heart, a Bronze Star, and the Army Commendation Medal for Valor. She has this amazing story that took place in Iraq, and I was really excited about that. And in the middle, of, as she's relating to me her story, she stopped and she said, oh, wait, I, I need to also tell you my grandfather served in World War II as a bomb disposal expert. And, you know, I, I was gold to my ears. I, I thought, you know what, I want to write this story. And so I had intended originally to write her grandfather's story as, as bomb disposal in World War II and have the, her story, have them be together in one volume. So you'd go right from his story to her story because she hasn't abandoned Iraq where her grandfather is very instrumental in really saving her life. And so I thought it would be so great to have those two together. It just didn't work. It was so jarring to go from World War II and all these characters you've come to, to know and respect to then jump into a completely different era and new characters, a new, new war, new time. And so, uh, yeah, because it just didn't work. I separated those two out. And so there's In Times of Rain and War is the World War II story, Rachel's grandfather. Um, and then Saving Rachel McCalley is kind of the follow-up story. It's Rachel's story in Iraq. And now they're, they're two separate books. The cool thing is people can download Rachel's story for free. If you go to my website, authorcameronwright.com, you can download it there. I do want to kind of throw out though, I wouldn't, I would read them in order. Don't read Rachel's story first because there's kind of spoilers in her story to her grandfather's World War II story. Um, but um, yeah, that's kind of how I was introduced to, to the World War II story and to Rachel's story and, and how that whole thing played out. So you've got two now in that genre is, do you plan on writing more? You know, I, um, I, I kind of, the stories over the years have just sort of, come up or come to me, if you will. And, uh, and I'll just kind of wait and see. I don't want to say that, you know, definitely will or won't. I just, I don't know yet. What is your next big project? 
So right now, I'm uh, the, the publisher called and they, they're bringing out a young reader edition of both The Rent Collector and The Orphan Keeper. And so I'm in the middle of, of kind of doing those. The Rent Collector's done and in. In fact, I've even got a cover for it here. This is what the cover is going to look like for the young reader edition of The Rent Collector. So real excited about that. Uh, you know, the young reader is it's going to be an, an eight to 12 year old kind of audience. The Rent Collector has been used in schools all across the country. And that's been really amazing to see. And, and this is exciting because now it kind of opens up the story to a, a little bit of a younger audience. And uh, right now I'm in the middle of, of writing the Orphan Keeper for that same audience. So that's what I was going to say. Are you... Uh... Most of yours are standalones. Will this be a series? Uh, no, I, I don't really have plans for uh, for that. Uh, I mean, you know, there, there's always a possibility that a second book could be written for really any of the books that, that I've, I've written, but that's no plans for, for any of that right now. In a way, I'm grateful to hear that because I have so many series. <laughs> I lose track of what what that book was when yeah. I, they come out with a second one. <laughs> Forced, and I don't want to force a story. <laughs> okay. Um, do you have any final comments before we leave? You know, not really. I just I appreciate the readers out there who pick up and read my books. I, I, I tell readers, you know, if they didn't read my books, I wouldn't have the chance to write. And so they're clearly my heroes for reading those and sharing them with others. So thank you very much. And I want to apologize to our audience. I'm having technical problem. I don't know why the two pic screens aren't coming up, but nevertheless, Cameron Wright is the person. So <laughs> we've got the important one here. So we have a wonderful giveaway and we are offering a print copy of In Times of Rain and War for anybody in US or Canada area. We want you to all get on rockandbookreviews.com and there will be a raffle copter, copter there to enter. Okay, and thank you so much. You're a delight and I've been excited to meet you and I'm excited to read your books. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. <laughs> okay, and we're signing off now and we hope that you'll search the universe through books. Bye now. <laughs>